Hey everybody, my name is Jason, also known as Pirate JC, and today we're going to take a look at how you can create conditional logic inside of your node material shaders that you create. Now, a little bit of context, traditionally adding if-else statements into shaders actually has a pretty big hit on performance. And so in Babylon, we generally discourage the writing of if-else statements in shaders so that we can maintain optimal performance at 60 frames a second. However, in some cases, we do need to be able to have different options, different paths, if you will, for what we want to do with our shaders. And we're not out of luck. Uh, there is a way that we can create conditional logic inside the node material without having to use if-else statements. And that's what I'm going to show you today. We're going to start by going to nme.babylonjs.com. The NME stands for Node Material Editor. And what we've got here, I have a fresh one actually. Uh, I've just focused in on the fragment side. We're going to ignore the vertex output today. We'll be focusing exclusively on uh, the color. And what I want to do is I want to be able to create a shader that allows me to switch between two different colors. So let's just color these uh, green and blue just for fun. So we'll do that one green and we'll do this one blue. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a node called the step node. Now you can ignore this for now, even though obviously we're connecting green up to the fragment output. Uh, we're going to create a switch again using the step node. Now the step node has two inputs. The first input is a flag value, an edge value. I'm just going to put that at 0.5 for now. And in very simple terms, what the step node does is it looks at an incoming value and it says, if my number is below the edge value, then I'm going to output zero. And if my number here into the uh, input value is above the edge value, then I'm going to output 1. And so right now, uh, I have 0, which is below this value. And so this node is outputting uh, 0. And I can show you that by actually hooking this right up into the RGB values. So what's happening now is both RG and B will be set to 0, giving us black. And that's what we can see here. If I take this, and we'll actually turn this into a slider by giving it a max value of 1, and I can slide this over. Watch what happens when I get to that 0.5 value. Boom. That node automatically gets set to 1. So what we can do is use this step node and multiply two different paths of logic by the output of this to give us one set of logic uh, versus the other. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. Now using the color, I'm going to show you step-by-step uh, -step how to do this. And then what we can do is simplify it after the fact. So we'll start with green. And I need to multiply the red, green, and blue channels of this color green by the output, either 0, zero or 1, saying I either want you to be set to nothing or I want you to be set to uh, green, the original values. And then we'll pipe that on forward. So what I need to do is actually be able to have access to the individual RGB channel. So I'm going to use a color splitter node. So I can take the color, put it in here. And then now I have individual access to each channel. I actually have access to the alpha as well, though we're not going to use it for uh, this particular um, video. And then I'm going to use a multiply node. And I'm going to need three of these, one for each of the RGB channels. OK. And I can take R, and I can put it into this first one up here. I can take G, put it into the second one and blue. And then we're simply going to multiply that by the output of the step node here. And then what we're going to do is then merge these back together, back into a color. So we have a color merger node. And so I can take this R, which again is being multiplied by the output of the step node, the green, and the blue. So again, in my little slider here, I have when it's set below the threshold of 0.5, it's outputting 0 and above it's outputting 1. But now if we take this RGB and put it in here, you'll notice that we still have black when we're set to 0, which is what we're currently at. But when I get above that edge value of 0.5, I will get green, which is really, really exciting. So we're halfway there. 
Uh, but now what I want to do is I want to be able to say that instead of black here, I want it to be blue. So I'm having this top chain of logic uh, apply when we're above the edge value, and then a bottom chain of logic here apply when I'm below the edge value. So we're going to do something super similar. I'm going to take the, these exact same four nodes, the color splitter, and then the multipliers for each color channel, and then the color merger. So we'll take those, we'll put them down here. Uh, we can bring these over a little bit. And I'm just going to start hooking stuff up. The blue is going to get past the color splitter. Same thing as before, the R channel is going to go up here. Green channel is going to go into this one, blue into this one. And then we're going to take the output of those, pipe them back into the color merger. Now, one difference for this bottom uh, chain of logic here, I can't simply take the exact output of this step node because then that would say I have green and blue both being active when they're multiplied by one. Uh, what I actually need to do is take the inverse result, and we can do that by actually just using a subtraction. So I can take a subtract node here, and what I can do is I can say, I want the output of this step node to go into the bottom one. And then the top input here, I'm simply going to be set to one. Now, here's why we're doing this. We're saying, creating basically an inverse switch when we're talking about one and zero. So I have the value of one. And when the output of the step node is set to one, the green channel will be applied. But I subtract one from one, and then I end up with the output here of zero. So I have the opposite, and I say there is no blue channel then, which is perfect. And vice versa, when I'm activating zero output here, the green channel will be multiplied by zero, so we won't see any green. But one minus zero will actually be one, and so we'll have full blue. So what I'm going to do is take the output of this subtraction node, and I'm going to put that into each of the multiply nodes here for the red, green, and blue channels. And then what we can do is we're missing one more final piece. So now I'm set to this value is below the edge value and set to black. If I pipe this guy in here, it will be blue. So we can see that it's working, but uh, we don't quite have them added together yet, right? So now I have black because green is set to black. Uh, and so what we need to do actually is add these together. And so I'm going to take uh, the green channel and the blue channel, and then we will output that to the fragment output. So now I have a complete switch where when it is below the edge value, it's blue. That's the bottom chain of logic. And then when we get to above, it's green. That's the top bit of edge logic. So there you have it. Pretty simple. That actually is conditional logic mathematically set up with the switch inside of the, the fragment shader in the node material editor. Pretty, pretty handy. However, we're not done. We can actually simplify it even more from here. Uh, in this case, what I did is I took both the green and blue channels, split those apart so I have uh, red, green, and blue access to each of the three channels, multiplied them by the value individually, and then packaged them back together. But we actually have a way that we don't have to have all of these different nodes to do that. We can simply, I'm going to delete these, use a scale node. Nice and easy. We don't actually have to separate the color. What a scale node will do is we can take the color and pass it in, and it will take any given vector, two, three, or four, so two values, three values, or four values, and multiply them all by the exact same value, which is in this case a one. And so I'm going to have to disconnect this here for a second because we're now using a vector four, not a problem. Uh, actually, I'll have to disconnect this one as well. We'll connect this over to the add. And now instead of RGB, since we have RGBA, we'll pipe that over into that one. And then we're going to take the same five nodes here, delete them, and we're going to use a scale node again. And you can see how this is dramatically simplifying the layout here. So it looks a lot more simple. And now when we go and pipe that into the add, go back to our slider, you'll see green is above and blue is down below. So it works, but it's a lot less nodes. But we're not done yet. There's actually two more nodes that we can combine into one. Because this subtraction of one minus the output of the step node, we can actually delete this as well 
And if you've played around with the node material editor, you've probably seen that there is a one minus node. And so rather than having to actually uh, tell it we want to do a subtraction with the specific float, it's built right into one node for us, and we get the exact same result. Again, showing you on the slider here, below the edge value is blue, above it is green. And there you have it, super simplified conditional logic inside of the shader with a mathematical switch. Absolutely love it, super fun. And don't forget, you're not limited to have just one uh, step node. You can have many of them nested together and have all kinds of different branching logic based on whatever your needs are. I hope you see that there's a lot of potential in this because I definitely do. And the coolest part about it is by doing it this way, as opposed to having complicated if else statements, even though it operates very similar to us, it actually saves a lot of performance on the GPU. And so we can maintain high performance experiences when we build our materials this way. That's it for this week. I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to this channel so you don't miss out on all the future content that we create. Hope you've enjoyed it and please let us know what you think in the comments. We'll see you next time.